Please help me welcome on John Ramirez. John Ramirez, my brother, how you doing tonight? Uh, I'm good, my brother. Blessings. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm excited. Uh, it's it just a one of a kind opportunity. Every time I come on with you, it's just uh, it, it's an amazing. It's I I always, I always say, you know, I honor and respect your ministry. I man, your ministry rocks, man. And I think God, you know, God's into powerful testimonies like yours, an atheist, a person that didn't believe God, a person that rejected the truth a person that had his own um in, uh counterfeit true right and you had to have yeah. a head-on collision with the lord in order to sit here tonight and share the cross of jesus christ to the world right so Amen. so i am honored to be here and i thank god that i'm able to team up with you share the battlefield and let them let the devil know that we are coming tonight stay right Come where on. you are because Come on, we are man. in the name of jesus amen I love it. I'm fired up. John Ramirez, people love you on my channel. I'm telling you right now, I know I have a lot of friends watching, a lot of people. You are our most requested guest, period, on our channel, in our community for the last two years. Like I said, people are always asking. People have a love for you, and I think I know why. I think I figured it out. It's because you have a love for people. I've watched you minister. I've seen you at the altars. I've seen the way you spent hours and hours when pastors tell you, hey, let's just go back to the green room. You don't have to worry about praying for anybody. You don't have to. Let's escort you back. And you'll sit there and pray for hours for people. You'll pour out doing deliverance praying for healing teaching i've watched some of the services that you've done where you're going like four hours you're like let's go i don't care it's been hot i've seen some of the services you do in la where there's no ac and it's hot in there and you're going hours and that people resonate with that people see that they honor that you know jesus said I didn't come to be served, I came to serve. So you really do, I wanna really put that out there before you start sharing your testimony, is that you really do have that servant's heart. If people don't know you, haven't been with you, I've had the chance to meet you, but to see you minister is, man, you have the heart for people, you have a heart for God. And I think when it comes to deliverance ministry, right? Casting out demons, spiritual warfare, you gotta love people. You gotta have compassion for people. At the end of the day, the ministry we do is a tiring ministry. Warfare ministry, destroying Satan's kingdom, it's not for the faint of heart, it's not golf ministry, it's not potluck <laughs> ministry, it's violence, it's, it's warfare, it's hours sometimes spent, as you know, casting out demons, laying hands on the sick, preaching the gospel, and the sacrifices you make. So I wanna really commend you on that, I wanna honor you on that. I think one thing people don't realize is that Paul said in 2 Corinthians 2.11, so that Satan will not outsmart us, we need to be familiar with Satan's evil schemes. That's what the Apostle Paul said. So tonight, as you share, I just want people to remember that God's called us to expose the schemes of the devil, to see the power of God, and to see when Satan's kingdom is destroyed, God's kingdom is established. So I love your testimony. It's so powerful. I want you to share tonight like we've never heard it before, okay? So I want you to pretend we've never heard it before. Don't spare any details. Take your time. Don't feel rushed. You know, just however you feel led. I want you to share where you came from, what God did, some of the stuff you were involved in. I have some questions down that if, you know, if the conversation stalls out, I'll ask you some stuff too that I know about your testimony. But man, just feel free to go for it. The platform's yours. Super excited about tonight. And man, thank you so much for having me. You know, I, 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 I know a lot of ministers and I know a lot of people that, that are wonderful ministers, vessels of honor for Jesus Christ. But I, I can say if I will compare myself to someone, I will compare. And I know the Bible said don't compare yourself to one another. But I'm saying I have the same heart you have as a servant. Mm -hmm. You know, I have the same heart you have. You know, I think the Bible says to you and I, right, uh, are, we, are you your brother's keeper? You know, and uh, I never seen, I never seen uh, a person. I've seen your videos. I've seen, I seen your testimony. I've seen how the crowd show up, people show up because they know they're going to have a real divine encounter with God. Amen. Mm. And you know, we the vessels and whatnot, but I see, I, I'm, I'm always taken back by what God has put his hand upon you. The fingerprint of God is upon your ministry. You know, the, the anointing, the prayer, you carry the presence of God in your ministry. And I think a lot of people carry a show, but many few people carry the presence. Amen. And I thank God for, I seen your ministry. I seen you minister and, um, Virginia Beach and whatnot, and I see the heart and the hunger and and how you are more determined than the enemy when you grab that mic, and I want to see people be set free. So we 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 very much alike in the, in, in 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 the kingdom of God in, in regards of uh in, in many in many ways in one. But just on that part, before I share my testimony, we love people. Yep, we love people, and it's genuine that people see it that we love people. You know, and one of the things God showed me. In my walk with him, God said, you never, you always did witchcraft on people, but you never saw the side effects of what wow. you did to people. 
So now, now the Lord said, not that I have to, because I want to. So I go, I go the extra mile to break the side effects of other people's witchcraft, of other people's demonic activities in people's life. Because you see, when I'm, I'm when I, and I share this one thing before I share my test, and when I'm praying for people, I see the demon. I know the demon. I know the components. I know the strength. I know the, I know, I know the rank of the demon. I know, I know his arsenals. I know his, I know his bands and scrolls that come together to compile the witchcraft, to compile the situation of the person that is being tormented. So I know how to put the thread. I know how to break the components because I've been there, done that. So I'm coming from a place of, of hanging out. With, it's like you hang out with a best friend or you hang out with someone and then you're in competition, you know his strength, you know his weaknesses. And I know that in the spirit world against demonic forces of all kind. I come to, I, and I stand at an altar to fight the good fight. So my brothers and sisters can see the light of Jesus Christ and they can see the truth of Jesus Christ and they can live the life that Jesus has for them. So I don't mind going the extra mile like you do. And, uh, you know, feet hurt, body's aching, but it's all good. Amen. So I share with the, with the wonderful people that are listening. What an incredible ministry you have. What a platform God giving you. And, I, and, you, and the great thing about you, you never take nothing for granted. You give God the glory. And I think I can compare myself to Paul in my testimony because Paul and I have a resemblance of, of being nasty, of being Christianers. Paul was a Christian killer. Paul killed Christians for a living. Paul was a hater. Paul was an angry man. Paul had a, a, a rebellious heart against the gospel. Paul hated the, the church. And I had the same, the same spirit on me. And Paul is amazing how Paul came to the one part of his life in the book of Acts. And, and he met Jesus. From the, he met the Jesus of the third heaven. He met the Jesus of the third heaven. Jesus spoke to him from the third heaven and said, Paul, Paul, why you prosecute me? You know, and Jesus spoke to Paul from the third heaven. When I was seven years old, the devil spoke to me from the second heaven. The devil spoke to me from the second heaven. A necklace, the seven demonic powers of the dark side fell from the second heaven. I was on a broken lot in the South Bronx standing there. Now my family came from a background of witchcraft from Puerto Rico. The lineage of my father's side was all witches and warlock, Santeria, Peritimo, Palo Mayumbe, a, a demon church going from seven in the morning, I mean from seven in the evening to five in the morning. We had already that engrafted in our spirit. Seven, in, I, the, seven in the evening to five in the morning, five in you're the at morning. demon church. That was demon church. And this is how the demon church started. We had plastic white chairs. We'll sit on them for about 20 minutes and then we'll put those chairs away because we have to we have to have demonic prayers to usher in the demons. So we usher the demons and the demonic prayers and then and then we put the plastic chairs away. And then from that time on to seven, from that time on to five in the morning, we'll be standing on our feet. Wow. When, 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 when Christians come to church, if you don't have a comfortable chair, uh, chair you don't have AC. If you don't have the right parking spot for them, you know, they don't want to come to the house of God. And if you preach 10 minutes too long, they come get upset. On. I mean, how I mean, those are mediocre Christians, by the way. Those are real believers, those are the mediocre Christian because they don't want to make they don't want to they don't want to make ways against the kingdom of, of darkness. They don't want to make ways. So they, they are settled, they are they're on the love boat, they're not on the battleship. So mm. so 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 my life came into a place that the second ne the necklace fell from the second heaven fell to my feet. I was I was in the schoolyard. I remember I was hanging out with a buddy, and I took the necklace, I put it in my pocket, and I heard the voice of my mother screaming, Johnny, Johnny, calling my name. And basically, there was no way in the world my mom could call me from a mile away, because that was that was a familiar spirit yelling my mom's name, thinking my mom was calling me. And I ran. I took the necklace, put it on my neck. And that means I initiated myself in, com in communication and in agreement with the kingdom of darkness at the seven years old. I put the wow. necklace on my neck. At the age of eight, my mom and my, my mom and my aunt was going over to the witch house to get a tarot card reading. And when I went with them at the age of eight, the witch locked her eyes in me and told my mother that if I don't get a, a ceremony done, the, the whole tarot card situation, instead of going to my aunt, my aunt was a witch, high rank witch. She still lives today in uh, Orlando, Florida. She moved from uh, Miami to Orlando, Florida. Uh, one of the most demonic people you can ever meet. I mean, she will ask her project. She would leave her body and leave her body sitting there for three days and be elsewhere. Wow. That's how powerful she was in the witchcraft for her. And, and I knew how to do the tricks. I know how to put my hands on fire. And I, when demon possessed and my hands would be burning. And then when the demon leaves my hand, I didn't have no marks or trace of burning flesh. 
So we, we practice these demonic forces. We practice demonic activity. We got connected and demon church. When I got my first sermon at age of eight for the five necklaces of Santeria, Chango, Jemaya, Ochun, Owatala, I got my, uh, Oya, I got my first five necklaces of the Jeroa religion going back to the 15th century, started from Africa into Cuba, then from Cuba into the Caribbean. That's how this demonic religion was born. And I was part of that kingdom for 25 years of my entire life. So I even- 25 years, wow. 25 years uh, in my entire life, moving up the ranks of demonic demonic activity, what you, what you call glory to glory in, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, we call steps of steps in the kingdom of darkness. When you lay hands on people, we lay hands at the demonic side in demon church. When you fell into the spirit, we fell into the demonic. When you spoke in, in tongues, we spoke in demonic tongues. The only difference between the, between the demon church and the real church of Jesus Christ, that the real church of Jesus Christ carries the presence of God and wow. we carry the demonic. Other churches in the Jesus Christ, they carry religion. They don't carry the presence. So, so you guys so, were copycatting, perverting a lot of the stuff the church does, the, the Holy fullest. Spirit does. You guys were doing completely. that, but in a demonic sense. And the demonic side of the world, we do uh, when you when you did when you did uh, pro prophecy, we did false prophecy. When you did word of knowledge, we did false word of knowledge. So everything that you copy, we we, we were right there with you. Mm. And there, and every and every aspect and every form from the dark side to the light, from the light to the dark side. We walk parallel with you. That's why a lot of Christians today, they, they, they believe demons are the Holy Spirit. That's why Christians today don't have no discernment. They get a word from a prophet and the, the prophet is a witch. You know, they get a word of knowledge and the, and the, and, and the person that's given the word of knowledge has a, a form of God, but they're denying the power and they're giving you a demonic word that you're receiving in your spirit and contaminate you, weaken you, and it's frustrating you and it demolishes you spiritually. And then now you know you're no longer in, in, the, in the will of God. So, so all these things that were happening in, in the demonic world, I was growing, 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 growing in the demonic world. Demons and principality from different regions, different regions, north, south, east, and west. I had I knew territorial spirits, I knew familiar spirits. I had connection with demons of the ocean. I had connection with marine spirit, with water spirit. I know water spirit that live in the ocean for six months and they come out, they live on land for six months. And then they go back and forth. I had things on the airwaves. I had the second and first heaven. I had connection with the first and second. I had connection. I had a divine connection with Jezebel, uh, the spirit of Jezebel. I had divine connection with the seducing spirit, spirit of murder, spirit of premature death, spirit of suicide. I had because I had all these. Uh, and then I had a cardon. It's a big giant pot with the horns of the devil in my house. The way I used to in feed your it. house. In my house. I will feed it human blood, my blood. I will cut myself and feed it my blood when it wanted my blood. I will, I will feed it animal blood. I had human bones in it. And this is I a cauldron, a big, a a big cauldron, cauldron, a big pot. Cauldron, weigh 150 pounds. And then it had the horn, it had the face of the devil on it. And that, that was the tent. We copied the Old Testament. The Old Testament, they had the tent for the meeting with Moses and them, where they meet the kind of glory, right? So this, this cauldron was the meeting place. It mean the devil would sit and talk all night. Wow. And talk all night and get all the recipes. And I will go to club to club and recruit people to the dark side. I will go to house parties and catch Christians in house parties, drinking wine and recruit them. I will go to clubs and recruit Christians from the dark side and put witchcraft on them because I know how to open the components. I know how to open gate portals. And then I know how to open doorways in the mouth by, by speaking to Christians, having dialogue. Because the Bible says, and the Bible makes it clear, don't have a conversation with the devil. Resist them and rebuke them. Yeah. Right. So, 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 so I was, I was in, in devil incarnated and speak to Christians and knew how to manipulate their mind and manipulate their spirit and show their world, their emotions and put witchcraft on them by the way I talk to them, by the way I seduce them through my words and give them my number. They will call me for car readings and tower car readings. They will call me for, for spiritual advice. Wow. So I grew up in a demonic world, 25 years. So 25 my, years, you're doing this full time. You're completely engulfed. Full -time. It's all you eat, sleep, drink. I mean, your hours doing yeah. sacrifices in demon church. What are some of the stuff that you would do? I mean, in demon church, are you guys singing? Are you guys worshiping? Are you guys we, in we, trances, we sing, we astral projecting? What's up, happening? Yeah. Everything in demon church, you've been trained like a military like a military organ. The devil is organized. The devil is not a fruitcake. The devil is not the, the mm. Jesus. Devil, devil lightning. If 
Bible says, even Jesus said in the, in, the, in the gospel, Jesus said that the kingdom of darkness is not divided. They're organized. They're running ranks. So we run in ranks. We run in military ranks. We know how to actually project, how to teach, how to actually project, make a contract with the demon. I did more actual projecting than anyone in the witchcraft world. I will leave my body, go into your house, curse your house, curse your marriage. I will put seducing spirits to your husband. I will do witchcraft, witchcraft money, witchcraft for hire. I got married in Halloween. I had a demonic wedding in Halloween, a ritual wedding of demonic animals being sacrificed, bloodbath rituals. In my demonic wedding on Halloween, October 31st, November 1st, we celebrate the Day of the Dead. That's when the Cinco de Mayo, I mean, that's when the Mexicans celebrate. And, and, and the other the muerto, they celebrate that. We celebrated that the month of October was all witchcraft month. The month of December, when a Christian went in the mall buying, uh, you know, Santa Claus a gift, we were at the church doing witchcraft to get the Christians to default the Christians in January on their 21 day fast. We already had a month ahead of you in the spiritual wow. world. I hope you guys are seeing the commitment level is what he's describing from his life in the occult. Like the commitment level is so up there. And then you look at John, the average Christian, the average believer, the five minute prayer a day, the barely showing up to church, the struggling. And here's the crazy thing I'm thinking about as you're sharing is when we shared spiritual warfare deliverance, you're out preaching the gospel, casting out demons. They argue with us. It's not really that real. It's not that big of a deal. The devil and we in the church, we preach as if the devil doesn't exist. And the Bible goes on and on to talk about not only did Jesus confront him every city he went to, Jesus confronted demons and then obviously also confronted the devil. But Paul warns us of there's this roaming lion, this, this, this entity called the devil who's roaring, roaming, looking to devour. Christians, believers, the Bible says in the Old Testament that witchcraft's goal is the people of God. Like the goal of witchcraft is to destroy the people of God. And so you're out there 25 years doing this full time. Did you even ever think or were you ever threatened by Christians? Did you ever even think like there's a God that's more powerful than Satan? Or I know you talked about how Satan is was your father. He became your dad. Talk to me a little bit mm -hmm. about that as well. Your relationship with your biological father, was there one there? And then your relationship with the devil as your father, how did that play? My, my relationship with my dad was never there because my dad was a misfit. My dad was a person that he died at 33 years old. My dad got shot in the face for a woman that was in his when he had a wife, a good wife home. So my dad died instantly when they shot him in the face wow. in the social club. My dad died. I remember when I was 13 years old, I was standing in front of the social club in the rain, in the cold wet weather of rain in October. I was holding my mom's hand at the age of 13. We were standing in front of the social club. They were separating, were separating me. My dad was a door that he was on the other side dead. And, uh, and my dad died as a warlock, you know, so I don't think my dad ever made heaven. To be, wow. to be to be honest, I don't think my dad ever made heaven. He died so quick. I don't think he had a chance to repent. And and we know the mercy of God is awesome. But this is the truth. The, 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 the Christians couldn't confront me, couldn't, couldn't fight me, spiritual warfare, not because of the God they served, because the vessel was weak and the, work, the vessel was anemic. So there was nothing in the vessel. There had, you see, the size of your commitment is the size of your faith and the size Good. of your authority in Christ. So if you don't have no commitment, you have no faith, you have no authority. Because if you commit it, and then if you commit it to the race, if you commit it to the core, if you commit it to the person that you want to serve, and then you have to understand that the commitment brings faith, and the faith brings the authority that God gives you in order to, to release it upon any demonic activity. So you, when you came upon me, you had nothing to release because you had nothing to fight with. Because you were not, but you was not but a sick, you were not but a sick Christian spiritually, sitting on a church like a pocketbook on Sunday. Wow. When I was going to demon church from seven in the evening to five in the morning, being armed and dangerous, being equipped, I had knowledge of the spirit round, how the spirit round move, how the spirit round operates, how I can put witchcraft on you, how I can dominate you, control you, how I can manipulate you, how I can destroy you, dismantle you, and fragment you to the witchcraft world. So I knew how to do these things to Christians. So Christian was never a fight. The only fight I had with Christian was two times. One was when I asked your project one time that I went to the name of this region to curse the region. Because if you could curse the region, if you can control the region, you can control the people. So when I went into the region, they had Christians in the spirit realm that I came in contact twice in 25 years. When I came in contact with this Christian, they knew how to pray in the spirit, spiritual warfare. And they knew how to chase me out the region. And I couldn't penetrate the region because their prayers were very powerful. And they were united. Lord. And they knew how to fight in the spirit. And they knew how to chase me out and void my, my mission that night. Wow.
So, so, and then there was another situation. I remember one time I came down my building. When I came down my building, I remember the, I remember that I was hearing this noise, this garbage of a worship that was playing at the time. That's what I called it. Garbage of worship. How, what the audacity of these hallelujah people coming to my neighborhood and play this crap. And that's when I went to chase them out of the neighborhood. There was a Nikki Cruz crew. They were called Truce. And these guys were young in their 20s. And I remember when I went to go, when I went to put witchcraft on them in the spirit realm, a wall of fire surrounded them. Come and on. That, that wall of fire came down. The Holy Spirit punched me in my chest. The Holy Spirit just punched me in my chest. And when the Holy Spirit punched me in my chest, I, for that moment, the love of Jesus I wrapped around me. And I started to tear up. And I couldn't believe what hit me that was more powerful what I came with to the fight. So it's like I came with a knife and it was a, and they came with a gun uh, oh. to the fight. So that shook me to the court, but I shook it off and I was able to shake it off and walk away from that fight because that fight was never mine. I never won that fight. I lost that fight and I lost the one that I actually projected with. So those I only lost three fights with Christians in the 25 years of spiritual warfare in the, in the demonic side. Wow. And talk to me as well about this whole thing about blood, right? Blood rituals, cutting yourself, drinking mm -hmm. your blood. We see now celebrities. We saw Megan Fox. That was like a viral clip of her talking about how her and Machine Gun Kelly, which you guys don't know who they are. They're just popular celebrities. It doesn't even matter. But she talked about how they drink each other's blood for ritual purposes. My point mm -hmm. of this, John, is that these mainstream celebrities are talking about how they drink blood. They do rituals. What is it with this blood? And were, is that something that you guys were doing? Something you did? Is that yeah, get, I did demon it. I power? Did it what was I, the goal? I, what was the point of that? I, yeah, the, 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 the goal of that, the goal of that, I did it all the time. I cut myself, drink my own blood. I cut myself and I, I drained the blood into the cardone, into the, into the pot. I would take cut myself and, and let the devil drink my blood in the pot, let the demon drink my blood. Because it, you see, it's a copycat of the true blood of Calvary. Oh. It, it, it is a copycat of the Old Testament when we kill the animal to substitute the original blood. If there's a if there's a great original, there always have to be a copycat. So so these people like making uh, and Megan Fox and and, and and her goofy boyfriend, whatever his name is, um, <laughs> they, they, they 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 have to drink the blood because they believe that there's power in the blood. But the only power in the blood is the one that was drained in Calvary two thousand years ago. Mm. So they just get a temporary fix, a wow. temporary fix, a temporary high on drinking the blood because that's what I did. I drink the blood. I drink, and then what they do? There was a ritual that they take. The, they take the goat and put it right in front of you. The goat is alive. They chop the head of the goat right, right in front of you. You, you have to sit in a in a circle. They cut the head of the goat right in front of you, and then when the, the head is dismantled of the goat, you have to drink the blood of the goat. I did Ugh. that. That's yeah, nasty. tell me about it. <laughs> tell me about it. So, so all because the devil tried to copy the blood of Calvary. Mm. Try to replace that with the blood of humans and the blood of animals. And that's what I, I did that 25 years. I did all the, I did all the ceremonies and 25 years, you couldn't do any more ceremonies in the demonic side. I did them all. I was the third high ranked devil worshiper in New York city. I had, I had, I had, I ran regions from, from New York city to Haiti, from Haiti to Cuba, from Cuba to Miami and back to New York. I ran regions in Europe, actually projecting and cursing and, and fragmenting the churches in that area because I know how to fragment the church. I know how to take over the church. I will go to live churches and I will say this in a very decent way. I will urinate in front of the door of the church and curse it. Wow. I would do all these things. And I, I remember my last, and I remember there was one time when I was getting close to my salvation, I parked my car and the devil said, how much do you love me, my son? I said, I love you with everything I got. He said, there's someone on the 12th floor I wanted to sacrifice him for me. I was heading up to my apartment. There was a guy that was waiting for me there to actually, he was waiting for me there to mug, to mug me. The guy was like six, three, six, four. And when I went around the bend, the door that was led to the roof top of my building, I grabbed him and I was trying to drag him into my apartment because I was half demon possessed. So I was going to stab him in the throat, cut his arms off, cut his head off, cut his leg and put it in my cardone so the demon could manifest and walk in human form. Wow. And these demons are telling you to do this. The devil speaking yeah, to you, the these demons. demons. Telling me to do this. They tell me, if you love me, this is what you do. So you know you commit it. So when you commit to something, you want to love that, that one thing because my father never loved me. Wow. So the devil became the father that you never had. He basically the took you under the father his wing. That I had. He took me under his wing. You know, it's amazing how the devil took me on his wing. We had a demonic meeting 
of all warlocks from different regions. And they came to the meeting, they left me behind in the meeting. They didn't, they didn't tell me that I was supposed to be in this meeting, that they left me behind. And what happened was that the day after, I found out about the meeting and I started to curse up a storm and saying, I'm going to quit the religion. I'm going to quit the religion. I'm going to quit the situation. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to serve this thing ever again. You've got the audacity to leave me behind. I'm a high rank warlock. Why would they leave me behind? I was, I was just spewing all kind of profanity. And then the devil made that meeting that night and he lined up the most powerful warlocks that was in the meeting bef- the night before. And he said, you, I can kill, you, I can kill, you, I can kill, you replace, you, I can replace you, I can replace you, and I can replace you. Let me tell you something, my son, John Ramirez, I can never replace, I love him. Wow, the devil said this. The devil said this. And now, how could the devil love you when you made an Im- the image of God? Mm. But he showed the level of commitment that I was sworn to the dark side. I will actually project and I will shadow shift myself into a wolf in people's houses. I will wow. end up in a wolf in people's houses to contract to demons. I had contracts to demons that were able to actually project. I had contracts to demons that I had jail. I had dirt from nine jail, uh, nine different jails from different states. I had I had dirt from nine cemeteries. I had dirt from places that they call like Bobbio in the New York City where people lose their mind because I knew I had coffins in my house, miniature coffins that I would put you in the coffin, put 21... I will put 21 candles around you, which is the 21 rows of dots. I will buy your personality. I will buy your character. I will steal your picture. I will steal your clothing because I have your personality in it. And do witchcraft. I will go to cemeteries, sleep in cemeteries. And I, will, I, will, I knew if the person in that tomb died from cancer, I knew how to buy the devil cancer and bring him out of that tomb and put it on you for, for a price wow. and you would deteriorate from cancer. I knew the most debatable levels of witchcraft. I had a book. That was given to me when I did, when I sold my soul to the devil. I got the marks here in my body when I sold my soul to the devil. My marks are here. Over here, my marks are here. They cut into my flesh. And when I when I would cut into my, my back, my back, I got the upside cross, the upside down cross renouncing Jesus right here, cut into my flesh. And I got I got the I got the mark right here, cut into 21 rows of dark side, slashed into my flesh with a, with a razor blade. And that night when I sold my soul, there was a book that was given to me. Only three people in the whole planet had that book it was symbols of the demonic side that i was able to use to put witchcraft on people and make them like zombies and then i will use those i can use those symbols and the last page of the book was ripped away because the two other people the other two people that had uh that had the, the the book they they ripped the last page and there i said look they, you know when you rip a page you can obviously see in the book there's something missing so i, I looked in the back i said the last page is missing why Why you ripped the last page? I mean, did you make an error writing the stuff down? They said, no, because we know that you will kill us with the last page. So that's why we didn't trust you. Wow. And I was breaking all the rules of the demonic side. Human bone. I was still up all night. Christian couldn't pray all night. I stepped up all night with human bone. Because they were hard to wax down. You know, I would take that, that I would take that thing that people wax down and you buy in the supermarket. I forgot. The, the, it's like something. It's like a metal yeah, thing. The pestle uh, or the mortar, like a pestle and mortar yeah. type thing. Yeah, I would buy that metal thing. Like five dollars, and I would take the human bone and wax it down, wax it down Ugh. all night. My hands are hurting, and I'm waxing down the human bones because I knew that the, that human bone had cancer, and I can do witchcraft and put cancer on people, spirit of infirmity, spirit of delusional spirit, delivered spirit from asylum, people that lost their minds. I will go in there and, and buy dirt from cemetery. I will buy the bones and put witchcraft coffins. I have, I had demonic. I had a. a Jezebel on, on the demonic side, Jezebel on, Jezebel is on the demonic side, but there's, a, there's, a, there's an entity part of Jezebel, one of her aspects in the demonic world is called, uh, her name is called Anaisa. Anaisa, that's she adopts her name and she dressed in a black wedding dress and then she has the baby coffin underneath her with, with baby bones. So I grew up in that world wow. of witchcraft, demonic witchcraft, and these, they for real people. Now these when are the people you're doing these parts. spells on. You're doing these spells on people. Are you getting paid to do this? Is there a reason? Are these Christians? Are they non-Christians? So tell yeah, me about. Christians, there was a, a woman who's. So Christians and non-Christians. There was a woman whose her husband was cheating with, um, asked to kill. Uh, what was that story about? There was like a woman who's was her husband. She was cheating on her husband, or how did that go? And you, they asked you to kill her. Is that true? Is that what was going on? You were basically a hitman for the spiritual realm or the occult, or explain mm-hmm. how that was how that was working. Yeah, you know, it's, it, I was a hitman from the. I was a hitman for hire. 
on the spiritual world because whatever you kill in the spirit, you can kill in the flesh. You can kill in the natural. And I remember I just share one thing real quick. I remember one time that my daughter was going to she was going to be there was she, was, she, was, she my daughter was young. She was about six years old, seven years old. They were going to take her to Florida to Disneyland. I didn't want her to go. I was I was divorced at the time. I had a I had a demonic wedding in October, Halloween, and then I was divorced. My wife came with a whole bunch of police officers to serve me my divorce papers because she knew how wicked and how demonic I was. So she she bought like she they bought like ten police officers for me to sign the papers or whatever, because they know how demonic I was. Oh, so what I was saying with this is in the demonic world, I was I was forced to be reckoned with. And, and that woman, that that woman that was caught, uh, the woman that I did hire me to kill her, I wrote the chapter in my book, uh, Out of Devil's Card, and I call that chapter Amazing Grace, because that woman was, she was a Christian. And uh, mm-hmm. she was a Christian. And, and her situation, she might have been a Christian that fell into a struggle. We don't know her story. Uh, she could have been a Christian that, you know, fell into a situation that the devil sucker puncher. I don't know the story behind her story. I know that when the lady came, she said, listen, the lady was into witchcraft. She said, I want you to do witchcraft to this woman at, at my husband's job because she's messing around my husband. She's sleeping with my husband and my husband is cheating on me. She's going to take my husband away. How much would you charge me to kill her? I kill her. I said, I charge you $10,000 to kill her. And then she said, OK. She, and then the lady was going to walk out of my apartment. She said she turned back and she said, hey. And, and I heard she's a Christian. I said, well, really? She's a Christian? You know, she's one of them hallelujah people? And she said, yeah, she's a hallelujah person. And she's doing that with my husband. I said, you know what? Save your $10,000. I'll kill her for free just because she's a Christian. Wow. And I walked away from $10,000 to kill this woman for free. And, and this is the, the, the thing is, I did the witchcraft I did for this woman, a recipe from the devil, coffin, a dog with her personality. Everything was set up, and I'm not going to get to the whole details of ingredients. Yeah. That's, a, that's an edify nobody. But the thing that I had set up to kill her, she should have died less than two weeks. I promise you that. Same way I told you my daughter was going to go to Florida and I wanted to go, and I did a witchcraft spell on, my, on, on her aunt, and she got a miscarriage, and I killed her baby in her womb when I was a demonic, the demonic warlock. Wow. I did that, and, I, and I, the witchcraft I put on this woman, she should have died. 30 days went by. My brother, 40 days went by. The lady came saying she didn't die yet. She hadn't died. And the devil one night came into my apartment. I felt the breeze walking in. I felt the breeze, this mm. cold breeze coming. And the devil sat right next to me. He said, we have to abort the mission. I said, what mission? The mission about the woman that you wanted her to be killed. I said, what do you mean abort the mission? It's 40 days now. She hasn't died. My reputation is on the line. They're going to think that my witchcraft don't work. You better do something. He said, no, we can't. Hard God said, leave her alone. Wow. Don't touch her. Wow. And this is, a, this is amazing grace. And, this, and it's not because the person was in, we don't, know the, we don't know the story of the person, why she fell into sin, because we all can fall into something. So it's not, but God, amazing grace. And then I, that hit me. I said, then this God called Jesus must be bigger than my daddy. Mm. If he told him not to touch her. I mean, so that made you start questioning the power of Satan because obviously there was someone more powerful than Satan because Satan's here telling you, hey, we can't kill this girl. We can't touch her. She's a Christian. And you're thinking, wait a minute. I thought I was the most powerful warlock. I thought I was serving the most powerful God. So did that start bringing in those questions in your mind about Satan's power? Some, 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 thing, some, some question marks in my mind. What if? What if this other God is more powerful? And this is the, this is the thing that, that grasped me the most, that even though this girl was a Christian and she was in sin at the moment in time, the amazing grace of God mm. saved her from me killing wow. her and sending her to the cemetery. It, the, my witchcraft was so powerful that I had an apartment with my wife at the time. And the lady that rent me the apartment, the lady that rent me my apartment, she actually didn't own the apartment it was a condominium she didn't own it she acted like she owned it she had subleased it for someone else and then subleased it to me acting like she was the owner and then months later some jamaican people come to my door they knocked on my door these are heavy duty witchcraft warlocks knocked on my door at three in the morning on the on the terrace door i opened the door and they said well, this is our apartment you better get out we're going to put witchcraft on you we're going to destroy you that woman that get lend you the, the woman that rented the apartment, she subleased it for months. I said, I don't know what's going on, but you knock on the wrong door. I'm the mm. son of the. I told him, you're gonna see what my daddy's gonna do to y'all. When when I said that to them, they left. Weeks, two weeks later, they were beheaded. Wow. 
They were beheaded. And then I lived in that apartment. I did witchcraft to the lady, right? To destroy her mind. And I lived in that apartment for one year, rent free. No one ever came to pick up the rent. I told my, I told my wife, let's just move on, start over to somewhere new. We moved out. We started over. Two days later, after I moved out, I saw the lady in the street, homeless, collecting soda pop bottles because that's how much I destroyed her life. And I'm not saying that to be proud. I'm not saying the devil. I'm just saying where God delivered me from. And this well, is like the, you said, the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, if some of you are just on here saying you're glorifying Satan, I don't think you guys realize the Apostle Paul, the Bible describes in the book of Acts, was getting Christians murdered. So Paul was literally holding the garments of those murdering Christians. The Bible says he was drying women, children, men out of their homes that were believers and having them stoned, having them killed. So think about the Apostle Paul, guys what he was doing, the power of God changes them. And then he ends up being one of the greatest apostles in all of scripture, writing two thirds in the new Testament. You know, I shared on the book of acts last night and the end where Paul, you know, finishes writing acts 28. Then he tells Timothy, I finished the race I've run, but I just think about this, John, as you're sharing the, I'm just thinking of the grace of God, the power of God, the mercy of God. And for those of you watching the chat, there's about 4,200 people, John watching right now, you have friends, family, coworkers that you think there's no way this person could get saved. But just hearing your testimony, John, there's no one too far. Like that's what I'm hearing as you're sharing. There's no one too far from the grace of God, the mercy of God, the power of God. I mean, you literally go from being a son of the devil to a son of God. You literally go from being, Man. go ahead, go for it. I, you know, the ignorance of people saying that I'm glorifying the devil, how stupid could you be? When I'm showing you the power of God that he can set your family free, yep. how he can set your sister free, how he can set your uncle free, how he can set maybe your homosexual brother free. How he can set someone free that you love, that he don't, the person doesn't have to die and go to hell. So I'm describing the graphic and the, and the graphic and the, and the darkness because there's people right now might be listening and say, maybe I want to make a contract with the devil because I want a record deal. Wow. Maybe I want to make a contract Come with on. the devil because I want a movie deal. And I'm saying to you, look what happened to me. Look at the despicable wow. Wow. acts. Look at the despicable display. Look at the despicable life that I lived for 25 years. You sure you want to make a contact with the devil? Because the devil might show you glamour, but on the other side of the spectrum, he's going to show you darkness. And that's what so happened good. to me. I don't know how ignorant Christians can come on here and say that I'm glorifying the devil. I mean, you need to go to Bible class or discipleship to start over because <laughs> I'm on. showing you just the, the, the reality of when you make when you make um, when you make a contract with someone that despicable and that demonic and someone that horrific, the devil that what could happen to you and the torment that I had to go through, the torment even to the point that God had to take me out of my body in 1999 and put me in hell. And that's how I got saved in order to, to, to display the majesty and the power of God in my life. And that's why I'm here today sharing the platform with you. So my brother, even my brother today, my, my, bro my natural brother, was well, he was a transvestite. He was a homosexual club singing dressed like a woman. He was a bisexual. He was a witch doctor. He was married to a regular woman. So even my brother, and a year before he died, he my brother practiced witchcraft to the court like I did. Mm. And he was homosexual. And my brother was a transvestite. My brother dressed like a woman and sung gay clubs. So, so my brother, even a year before he died, he met Jesus Christ and met Jesus Christ, became a believer, filled with the Come Holy on. Spirit. Went to, went, went, and, then, and, and so if I say my brother was this and my brother and I shared the negativity and I shared the darkness of my brother, did that make my brother ignorant? Oh, he's glorifying the devil. No, he's just displaying the power of Jesus Christ that could set anyone free. So, so we need good. to come to see the power of God. That doesn't matter where your son, your daughter's at. No matter if your son is in drugs, no matter where your son is in jail. Come on. No matter if your son is a homosexual, no matter, no matter if your son is the, worships the devil or new age, there's hope for your family today through my testimony. There's hope to your family today that God can pull anyone out of any, any pit. And I want to also let people know you may be watching this and you are raised in church or whatever, but a lot of people that watch our broadcast are not saved. They're not raised in church. They've never been to church. And they're, like you said, there are some people watching this right now that will watch the replay, that will listen on Spotify, that are here live. They might be, and some of them are, living the exact life you were living. They're chasing, they're climbing that ladder, the steps you called it, trying to become more, more demonic power, more spirits enter my body, more rituals, more sacrifices, thinking they're totally fine doing what they're doing. And then here you are sharing this story and it's gonna help bring them out. So I want everyone to remember, these Maybe. testimonies bring people out and you get tons of messages. I get so many messages, John, of people saying, 
I watched your video with John Ramirez from, you know, two years ago. It has almost, I said, a million views. And I came out of witchcraft. I came out of the occult. I came out of the new age. I'm no <laughs> longer Man. reading tarot cards, doing Ouija boards, angel cards, vision board, all the stuff they were doing. And so it's, it's powerful to hear. Now, I want to talk about one thing is you decided to take a year off from the devil and did, and he made you blind. Is that correct? Share that a little bit where you decided, hey, I'm leaving you, Satan. I'm taking a year off. And then you ended up going through blindness and some of the backlash you went through as you started leaving. You know, now you're starting to come out of the occult. You're starting to see the power of God is more powerful, obviously, than the power of Satan. Explain some of that journey is, that you went through. Well, you know, the power of God is undescribable because even even this Christian right now that are, right now they're listening to you and I, that are probably being tormented, that are being tormented in their dreams, that are being tormented with anxiety, fear, being tormented with suicide. There's people might not might be watching, being tormented with unbelief, being tormented with any sickness. And we could show you that the depth of your torment, God is greater than your torment, and God can set you free tonight. You know, mm -hmm. and that's one this is the display of the God's magic, God's power. And even in 1997, I decided to say, I, you know, you have you have a beautiful family, my brother, you got beautiful daughters. And I, had, I have a daughter named, named Amanda. And my daughter at the time, she was small like your daughters. And I said, you know what? I don't want to be like my dad. My dad never loved me. My dad never took care of me. My dad, all he had was broken promises. As good as he probably wanted to do something good for me and my brothers. So I'm going to take a time out. I'm going to take a step back from witchcraft. I'm going to go see my daughter. I'm going to spend time with her. I want to love on her. I want to be a good dad. And when I said that, the devil said, you're not going to go see your daughter. You committed to me. You belong to me. You work, you, work for, you work for me full time. You're not taking no break. You're not taking no sabbatical. I wow. said, yes, I, you will see. The devil hit me with blindness. He blinded me for one year. I, was I lost my eyesight for one year. I was registered with the Commission of the Blind. They was training me in the Commission of the Blind on 59th Street and Lexington Avenue. They was training me how to walk with a, with a dog, with an eye-seeing dog, and with the cane. And they were showing me how to fold money. This is a 20. This is a 10. I was being, I was being trained to know how to live in a blind world for one year. And then after one year, my eyesight started to come back. After so many surgeries, my eyesight came back. And this is the majesty of the goodness of the grace of God. Even though you could be in the hog pen, even though you could be in the hog pen, I was in the hog pen for one year, my eyesight. And after I came back deeper into witchcraft, my eyesight came back and the devil said, see, you came back to me. I love you. You're my son. Here's go back your eyesight. When I got saved in 1999, 2000 and something, the Lord sat me down. He said, John, I was the one to give you your eyesight because I had a plan and a purpose for your life. Even though you hated me, even though you hated the cross, you hated Christians, and you hated my people, I still gave you back your eyesight because I wanted you. Wow. My hand was upon you. In 1997 to 1998, God gave me back my eyesight. In 1999, I came to Jesus Christ. Wow. Talk to me about that. So you go 25 years and you're in the occult, seven years old, this necklace falls. For those that are just jumping on, falls out of the second heaven. You're pretty much hand selected by Satan. He becomes the father that you never had. You're working for him for 25 years. You're putting spells on people, a spiritual hitman. I mean, really killing people, astral projecting, becoming shape-shifting into wolf, sleeping at the sleeping at the graveyards. You have a cauldron in your house. I mean, you're doing everything. You're high-ranking warlock in New York, high, high priest, I guess you'd call it, in the demonic realm. And then all of a sudden, 1997, 98, you lose your eyesight, you try to take a break. Now 99, talk to us now about your salvation encounter. Right. How did you end up getting saved? And it was in 1999, you said, where you when you got saved? 1999, I actually met a girl I was dating. She was a backslider. I was dating her. We had we had somewhat of a relationship. I was never going to surrender the demon world to nobody. And I remember uh, one. I remember I came from a club of putting witchcraft on people and and hiring and, and recruiting people to the witchcraft world. And I remember I was dating this girl on and off. You know, she was like a girlfriend or whatnot. But I, I, she told me, could once you come to church, she didn't even know I was a demon person. She didn't know. She had no idea that I was into the demonic. That's that's she had no discernment. She was a backslider. And this is the way God does things because it's amazing how I was dating this girl. I sat with her family, had dinners in her family's house. There were twenty-seven year old. There were Christianity for twenty-seven years. They couldn't discern who I was. Sitting in their home, they couldn't discern who I was. What kind of what kind of a relationship I had with the devil. And uh, in, in, in the end of the spectrum, uh, I, I remember one day I came from the club recruiting people. It was five in the morning. I, I slept for three hours. I got up in the morning. I sat in front of my television. And this is the most remarkable experience and encounter besides hell. It was I sat in front of my television. I was watching the Jerry Springer show. And I heard a voice for the first time, an audible voice. 
Not, not you. You have to. You have to understand where I'm coming from. I know the voice of the devil, like the mm. back of my hand. I know the voice of principality. I've ran the shadows of the demonic, the shiftings of the demonic world. That's a high level of the demonic world, and no one could get up there. You could spend your whole life to get up there. I had the favor of the devil to live on the demonic or the shadows of that world, to live there. Well, all the ceremonies done from the age of seven to the age of 30, 35 in my body. There was no more ceremonies you could do in your body from the demonic world. Living on that and knowing every principality. I know every voice, every demon of murder, suicide, premature death. I know every voice of every demonic, satanic spirit, familiar spirits. I know every voice. I can describe them. I can tell how they work. I can tell you how to speak. I can tell you the components of those voices. And there was a voice that I sat down watching Jeremy Springer and it said to me, my son, I'm coming soon. What are you going to do with your life? Wow. And that voice, that voice was audible. You can hear it. It shook my apartment. And the voice, the voice, the voice, the way, the way I can describe that voice to you, it was like standing by a brook of water, the peace of that Come voice, on. the authority of thunder behind it. And I shook my apartment and I looked to the right of my apartment and I saw the sky on fire and I saw people running from everywhere, but they had no way to hide. And the book of Revelation talks about the sky being on fire. I never read the Bible. Mm. Then I snapped out of that. I snapped out of that, uh, that, 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 that revelation, that image that he saw me in my apartment and I shook it off. And then a week later, I was having uh, some dinner in, in, in my ex in a uh, backside and girl's house. And I said, listen, I had this incredible experience in my apartment. Uh, some voice showed up and talked to me and wow, said, this is oh, calling you. Jesus is calling you. I said, Jesus ain't calling nobody. He make a mistake. He called me. I don't want nothing to do with him. I, I have nothing to do with Christianity. And then later on, they found out I was a devil worshiper to a banquet that I went. That's another story. A person that was two people was in that banquet. These people were in that banquet. When I walked into the banquet, they saw me. They ran to the bathroom because they thought I came to curse the banquet. And they didn't know that I was hanging out with the, de- uh, the backside girl's parent. They told her, this guy's a devil worshiper. Why are you mm. doing that? He's a son of the devil. And then that led up to the point that on October night, I, I, went to the, I went to the witchcraft warehouse to buy all the ingredients. to put which I was going to put demonic onslaught on people in October. In October 99, I sat on my bed and, and I said, I don't know who you are. I said, I want nothing to do with you, Jesus. I hate you. I want nothing to do you. I want nothing to do. My daddy's bigger than you. My daddy's devil is bigger than you. Leave me alone. I was young. Leave me alone. Don't mm. touch me. Leave me alone. I want nothing to do with you. Leave me alone. I will serve the devil and I'd rather go to hell before I serve you. I said, you have no power. The devil has more power than you. My daddy got more power than you. And don't mess with me. Don't touch me tonight. And then the only thing that came out of my mouth and I was falling into this anesthesia sleep was the only voice that came out of my mouth and it was in my word. If you're bigger than my daddy, the devil, you show me tonight or leave me alone. And I went to this anesthesia sleep, came out of my body, ended up in a train going hellbound. And this train was going so fast. There's nothing on the earth can go this fast. It was going under. And when it crashed into hell, that the doors exploded, this explosion, I stepped into hell. And when I stepped into hell, this is the remarkable thing about hell. Hell is alive. Hell is alive. It's a location. It's alive. When I stepped on the ground in hell, it breathes like a person. You go, it breathes like a person. When the person has heavy breath, it breathes like a. And then when I when I stepped out of hell, this 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 torment just grabs you right there. And when it grabs, it wraps around you like a person. It's a person wraps around you, but it but you can feel it's like it's like a python. And you can, the torment fear comes upon you. You can't take it off. You can't undress yourself with it. It comes upon you, and then all oh, you say, "I don't belong here." And then I remember I saw some people that were in the witchcraft world that were up. Uh, one of them was my cousin from my, my bloodline of my father's side. He was in hell. And I said, how'd you get out of here? He said, we don't know. We don't know. And then I, and, and now this is the big picture. He's alive on the earth to today. And the Lord said that he'll never repent. He'll end up in hell. Mm. So, so as I was walking the portals of hell, as I was walking the portals of hell, you could feel the torment. You could feel the fear. You could, you could feel the anguish. You could feel the thirst. You could feel the people yelling and screaming from the background. But those noises in the background, they're not on the earth. They're not on the earth. The wailing, the wailing. You can't see the hand in front of your face. So when I got to a place in hell that I was going to the portals of hell, when I got to a place, the devil came out. And the devil said, I loved you. 
I loved you in demonic tongues. I loved you. And then Jezebel was on the train when I was going to hell, speaking to me in demonic tongues, calling me traitor. When I hit the hell, the devil came out from one of the portals. He said, one of the, one of the entries of the hell, he came out. He said, I love you. You're like my son. I gave everything you wanted from the age of eight years old. Your father never loved you. I loved you and all this stuff. And he said, he said I destroy your father. So, so you can, I can give you the baton. So, so you can, you can be with me. Now you're going to leave me. This is the conversation I'm having with the devil. And I'm so confused in, in, out of my body experience in hell. I said, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what's going on. You need to let my mind regroup. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not leaving you. And he said, yes, you are. You're leaving me. He said, I have to destroy before you leave me. So when he went to grab me, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared in hell. And the devil made contact with the cross and he felt like nothing. And then I ran to another section of hell. As I was running, I can hear that it just, it just you feel like you're suffocating. That's best for you, like a, a slow suffocation, but you're still breathing at the same time. It's like a mixture of both. And as I was running to the portals of hell, the devil came out again. This time he came out with the horns and the wings and all his wings were stained. They were stained, like filthy garments. They were stained. He came out. He said, I'm going to destroy you. And I said, no, you're not because I got these marks here and I will destroy you. And then he said, I gave you that. That's my contract that I own you. And when he went to Grammy again, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared again. And he made contact with it. The devil must have been like 15 feet tall at the moment. And the cross hit him. The wooden cross. That's the same cross that was in Calvary. Showed up in hell. Hit him. Dropped him like nothing. Like a Mike Tyson blow. Nothing. And then I woke up. I went back into my body. I felt going back into my body. And I woke up. I felt like people were doing electrical paddles on my chest, bringing me back to life. And that's how I felt in my body. I came back into my body. Jesus Christ said, I can give you one more chance. Come and follow me. And then I bent my knee in October in the Bronx to the Lord Jesus Christ, not knowing that he was going to write my story and be here today. Mm. And now I'm, I'm a believer. I'm, I'm a believer 1,000%. The man, Jesus Christ, he owns my life. And I signed a contract. I took a piece of paper. The 700 Club got it. They, were, they tripped. I signed a contract. I took a piece of paper because I had this contract with the devil. I said, Lord, I'm making a contract with you. I signed a contract with paper. I said, I'm doing life in Jesus. Come I want on. No, I'm on death row. And I signed my name on it. And I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So good. So you get radically saved. Wow, powerful. You have this out-of-body experience where you end up in hell. And then God brings you out. You get saved. What did it look like the next few years? Give us a summary. Did you, I know, obviously now you're in full-time ministry. You're preaching. You have... I don't know how many books you have now, several books, bestsellers. If you guys haven't read his books, I, I, the first book I read of yours is Out of the Devil's Cauldron of Your Testimony, Life Changing. Uh -huh. If you guys don't know, that's his, I think that's your first book. Is that right? That was your that's original book. book. Yep. You guys need to check book. that out, but he has several super powerful books. Tell us a little bit about you get saved. Did you get immediately start preaching? How did you get called to ministry? What, what was that process like? Cause that's John, listen, from an outsider listening to you, that is <laughs> radical. You go from being in the occult for 25 years. It's everything you do. It's every fiber of your being. You eat, breathe, and sleep. The devil, demons, all the stuff. You might think, well, it was normal for me, but for all of us people that were never in that, it's not normal. We're just like, what? So you go from that, you get radically saved. How do you transition? Now you have this massive cauldron in your living room, and here you are a Christian. You have all these ties, relationships that you built for 25 years with other warlocks, other witches. Tell me a little bit about some of the transition from be becoming a Christian. I mean, give us some of the stuff that you went through. Oh, man. It, it just, when I got saved, it echoed to the demonic world. He's a I'm sure traitor. everybody was talking about it, right? Everybody was talking about it. It was like front headline news in the demonic world. John Ramirez gave his life to Come Jesus on. Christ. And we hate him. He's a traitor. Don't talk to him. Don't associate with him. If he calls you, don't take his calls. All right? And then this is the key. 20, 30 days. 30, I walked into my apartment. And I had all this demonic stuff in my house. I had a hundred thousand dollar witchcraft stuff in my house. And it was like, they were looking at me like, like they wanted to kill me. And then I remember 30 days of torment. I would lay in my bed and I would step, I would sleep during the day to try to, to try to step at night because the demons and the tormentors would come to torment me. They try to wow. rip my body, my soul out of my body. They pulled me by my legs at night. And then my, my bed would go ice cold. And then I had Jezebel walk into the room and she would walk around the bed. You know, and you could feel the fear come into the room. She lay in my bed. She watched me all night, grieving on my neck. And you could feel the torment, um, the torment. And then the torment that would grab me by my throat and pick me up off the bed. All that torment. And then I, I took, it took, it took three trips on a station wagon. One of them big station wagon, old school station wagons. 
three trips to throw out all my demonic stuff in the trash. That's how much stuff I had. The guy filled up the, he filled up the back, like a Camino, the back of a Camino. He filled that up to the, to the very top, completely full. Three trips to throw all my demonic stuff away. And the sad thing about it is that when I got to church, the first couple of months they loved me and then they hated me and they didn't want to, they didn't want to receive me or accept me. And I remember one time I was sitting in this little astro van that they invited me to return tuxedos. And I was sitting in the back because I was, felt so shy and so out of place. I was sitting in the back and they were like, oh, the message is good. Hallelujah. What do you think, John? And I'm like, I was saying in the back sitting there, I said, why would they want to invite me to return tuxedos when there must have been a wedding the night before and they invite me to the wedding? Mm. And then I was in, in the church where they were live and they were live and they were live because I had a Bible with taps. And they would laugh and say, he's, a, he's still a devil worshiper. And give him time, he'll go back to the devil. And they have wow. So instead of them embracing you, they didn't embrace no. you at all. They're making fun. Oh, he's going to go back. I mean, it sounds like they yeah. didn't know what to do with you, how to handle you. They and they, they thought, you. and that was like what happened with Paul. They're like, no, he's undercover. So they were thinking you're undercover. You're just doing this. And some people uh -huh. still think that, which it shows how ignorant people are. But it's, they thought you were undercover trying to come in and destroy their church. So they didn't uh -huh. even embrace you. That is so years. crazy. For two years, they didn't embrace me. I didn't get invited to banquets. I didn't get invited to fellowships or anything like that. So I lived my life solo for two years, just reading Ephesians 6. There was one guy named Ricky. He would come once in a while. He would try to teach me Bible class. And my friend Jose, he would teach me discipleship, how to, how to keep up. You know how I got my deliverance? I got my deliverance when I went to the baptism pool. There was 150 people, and I was the last person to get baptized that day. And uh, people, there was about 300 people came to the meeting of the baptism. Well, the family, I didn't have no family come to see my baptism. So wow. the lady, the girl came to, to, they came to see my baptism, the ex-girlfriend and uh, the, the parents, they, they were there to see my baptism. And everybody gave us an ovation when I went to get baptized. And then when I went into the water and I went down to the waters, the hand of God came into the baptism pool. God's hands was big. They came into the baptism pool and they grabbed every ceremony out of my body and ripped it out. Come on. It was my first deliverance. And I when I got when I came out the when I came off the water, I said to I said to the two people that was, you know, the two gentlemen that was next to me that I said, Did you see the hands? Did you see the hands? They said, We didn't see nothing. We didn't see nothing. They were very like, we didn't see no hands. We it was the hands of God, the hands of Jesus. The hands were scarred. The hands were scarred. They went into the water and pulled, that, ripped out every ceremony from the age of eight to the age of 35. And then my second deliverance, which is my last deliverance, was I was sitting in, in, in discipleship class. But no, we don't do that anymore in church. But Go I was ahead. sitting in discipleship class. And they told me, read Isaiah 53. And when I read Isaiah 53, I cried. But it was, it was a supernatural cry. I kept crying, crying. I couldn't stop crying. And that was my second deliverance. Wow. So you got straight up delivered in the baptismal and then you got delivered at the discipleship class. And so now you're saved. When did you start? And I just wanted, I'm just asking you stuff that I haven't heard anyone ask you before. When did you start the ministry? When did you start preaching? I mean, now you have a powerful ministry. Obviously you travel, you preach, you've written a bunch of best-selling books. God is using you in tremendous ways on social media, all over the place, right? We know that God is using you so powerfully. How many years after you get saved, do you feel the call to preach the gospel? You knew this is what I eight wanted to do. Years, eight years I got saved. I was just doing, sharing my testimony here and there, eight years here and there. God took eight, seven years to detox me, prepare me. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. In those seven years, I went to a funeral about a young lady that I, she got saved. She was in the witchcraft world. She was connected with the occult that I was in. And when I went to her funeral to pay her respect, because she gave her life to the Lord, she died of cancer. And the witchcraft people that that, that that nurtured me, they nurtured me from the day one at eight years old. They were there at the witchcraft place. When I walked at the funeral, when I walked in, they looked at me and said, we haven't killed you yet. You're still alive. Wow. And then when I walked out of that witchcraft world, that was completely closed. Before, when that door closed completely after seven years, in the eighth year, I started to share my testimony here and there, little by little here and there. And then somehow the 700 Cup got went on it. And they, they came from Virginia all the way to my house to, to, to do my testimony on a 700 club. Wow. And then that, that opened the door for you to preach and travel and do everything you're doing. 
I did, I did my, I did, I think I did my first website was done by Yahoo. It took three minutes. It looked like someone took a crayon box in elementary school and did the website, you know, and it was all, all baby steps with the Lord because I had, I have, the Lord has blessed me to, to the word of knowledge and I didn't want to use it because I thought it was somehow practicing witchcraft, but the Bible says all good gifts come from above. Mm-hmm. And uh, today the Lord has used me in so many capacities, so many ways, so many avenues in the kingdom to do his work but it was it was a it was one step at a time one stair at a time one step at a time one step at a time and when people were ridiculing when people were laughing when people were mocking when people were saying he's still he'll go back to the devil no one no one can get out and survive no one can get out mm-hmm. back listen bankruptcy no money Ponzi lost a house that was worth five hundred twenty thousand dollars in the bronx I was getting a fresh head cut. I got my car got weak, but when I came out, I had to take the train home. Hungry, no money, part-time job, never left the table of Jesus Christ. Never backslid. Never left the table because I know the word commitment. When you commit yourself to something and to someone, start something, complete it. So good. Some people, guys, I want to open it up just for a few minutes here. I know we've already been live for over an hour, but I want to open up just a couple questions that people are asking. So if you have a question for John, put a Q, capital Q, period, then ask your question. We're going to go through these quick because I know this whole time people have been spamming, asking questions. But John, your testimony is so incredible, so powerful. I know everyone watching is like, I want to, if I could just have five minutes to talk to him, I would ask him this or ask him that. So go ahead, guys, put that in the comment. One thing that's been asked over and over throughout the broadcast, there's people in here that say i had a similar encounter with satan or spirit probably likely it was just a demonic spirit where they sold their soul talk to us just for a moment is it even possible and those watching like talk to us about those that are watching that say i've sold my soul to a demon i've written a contract i've done this stuff talk to us about that let, let, let me thank oh man praise god for that question let me break something down to people so people don't get don't get it twisted and know that it's like if i have if you have a car i'm sure you do Right. Yep. I can't go out and sell your car because you own the title of your car. Right. So Jesus owned the title of your soul. You can't sell your soul because Jesus owns the title. So when a demon comes up to you and say, you sell your soul, you sign a piece of paper or you sign with your blood. Listen to me. If I did 25 years from the age of seven to the age of to my first initiation was the age of eight. So if I did 25 years, I did all the ceremonies in my body. Right. I want you to catch to the people to listen. I did all the ceremonies. I went to demon church from seven in the evening, five in the morning. I got married in Halloween, demonic wedding. I did all that. I did witchcraft for hire, astral project. I had contract with demons. To, I mean, we're talking about every demon. You can envy demon in the kingdom of dark that I had a contract with. You know, even the ice bucket challenge, the last contract I did, I don't know what Christian was doing the ice bucket challenge when I had a contract with a demon. It's called Sansi. They, that's the last thing they do to, to, to close the deal with the demon. This is what happens in the demonic world. You, the Satan can never buy your soul. He can buy your time. He could buy your devotion and your commitment. That's what he buys. So if you say you sign a piece of paper, but you're not committed and you haven't stole your time to the devil, like devotionally, you devote your time to him and you devote, you devote your time and your allegiance to him, then you, you, that's the only thing you can sell. There's no way you can sell your soul. When people say, I sold my soul to the devil, you sold your devotion and your time and your commitment to the devil. Because when the point of a man dies, it's the judgment absent from the body, not present in Lucifer, present in the Lord. Don't stress out those of you that think you sold your soul. The Bible says that God owns your soul, not the devil. So you can't sell something that doesn't belong to you. Really good. Exactly. I think that that gets people's fear out because a lot of people think, and this is the why the devil does this, guys. He tells you you sold your soul to him because then you think I'm irredeemable. There's no way I could be saved. So you never pursue God because the devil convinces you that you're already his. You can never be saved. So I'm so glad you broke that down, John. How did you, next question is, how did you meet David Wilkerson? What is your relationship like or what was it like with Times Square Church? Did you meet David? David Wilkerson, what was that like? Uh, David Wilkerson was amazing because uh, I went to Times, I went to t- Times Square Church by accident because nothing is accident in the Lord, but I was going to a dead church in the Bronx and I said, Lord, this is Christianity. My demon church was a lot more alive than this church. Mm. Why would you take me out of demon church? I was doing more in the demon church and we were having more of a, we had more unity and we had, we had more of the power in the, in the demon church than this Christian dead church. It was alive at one time, it went dead. 
So the Lord took me. I heard I heard Times Square Church, Times Square Church. So I did I did my homework on it. I ended up in Times Square Church. I was there. I was there. I said, man, this is I gotta go here. This this is this was a real Christianity. I mean, the fire God was there, the presence God was there, the Holy Spirit was there. I was there. A year later, going in that church, committed, going there. All the, I said, I'm gonna volunteer and I want to give some time to this church because I have time. I want to go clean whatever they want me to do. I want to volunteer. I want to join a ministry here to volunteer because they helped me grow spiritually. So I want to give something back. So I went to the church. I went, I signed up, I did an application. They took me up to the fourth floor. They said, Hey, we want you to be part of the maintenance crew. Come clean. What days do you want to come? I said, I can come Mondays, I can come Tuesdays, come I can come Thursday, I can come clean the church, I can clean the bathrooms you want me to, I can clean the altar, whatever you need me to do, you can count me in. I said, I do my best to clean. They were laughing, right? And I said, Well, you're laughing. They said, No, we just wanted to see where your heart was at. We don't have, we have, what we have is, uh, we have an opening in the security ministry as a volunteer. Wow. And I said, okay, I, I do that. I told my daughter, I said, we want to know if you were selfish. We want to know if you were, if you were prideful to claim battle, to claim, claim the church. I said, no, I do that too. You want me to do that? And so, no, we want to be part. So in the security so, ministry, yeah. our other elder, yeah, it was powerful, right? So they, it was a trick question, but it was to see to see where my heart was right. So when I, I when I when I got into the security ministry, I was under every elder in the church in Times Square Church has a ministry they run under the eldership for the for the pastors. So one day I was uh, standing around, and uh, the elder turned over to me. I was the youngest uh, security um, volunteer, and he said, "Try so you want to walk David Wilkerson home?" And I was like, "Sure, I walk him home." So I was as I was walking him home. This is an amazing part because I had a Nikki Cruz moment. This is an amazing part. David Wilkinson loved me like a young Nikki Cruz because David Wilkinson mentored me for three years. So this is the part that in content, Nikki Cruz said, told David, if you preach a gospel, I cut you. And David Wilkinson told Nikki Cruz, if you cut me to a thousand pieces and you throw me in the street, all thousand pieces, Nikki, it's going to say, Jesus love you, Nikki. That was, that was, wow. that was in, in the fifties and the sixties. That was, that was David. That was Nikki Cruz moment. You see? So back fast forward. As I walk and walk and say home, he said he was asking me questions, but I was so nervous I was answering the wrong way. And he said, How long you been in here? I said, I've been in New York City all my life. He said, No, Times Square Church. I'm asking you in the way you've been in New York City. I'm asking you Times Square Church. So we walked, we walked to his house. When we went to we got in front of his house, his apartment building actually, because he lived on uh, 50th Street and 8th Avenue. We got in front of the, the apartment building. I think he was gonna say goodbye, see you tomorrow, or whatever. He he grabbed my hand. He said, I see Jesus Christ in you. Mm. that was my Nikki Cruz moment. And then a couple of months later, God said, share your testimony with him. I didn't want to share it. I kept holding back, holding back. Holy Spirit came convicting me one day. I, said, I couldn't hold, I couldn't deal with the conviction anymore. It was so powerful. I said, Dave, I got to tell you something. I'm not saying this to say, I'm just saying because Holy Spirit, every time I walk away from you, he convicted me so strong. I don't know what to do with myself when I go home. So I said, I was a devil worshiper. I share my testimony. He said, next Sunday, you're going to share your testimony in Times Square Church. He said, I'm Come bringing you on. up. He laid hands on me in the back. He prayed over me. Next Sunday is all over YouTube. You can see it on YouTube. He brings me up. He said, he said, he, 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 I mean, he said, he said some beautiful things about my life and about, about my relationship at home. And I had an amazing relationship. I go to supermarket with David Wilkins and he laid hands on me. He prayed over me. He told me how to do altar calls. He told me how to go out and preach. Then he, he broke my heart. He said, you have a powerful testimony. But you better learn how to preach, but you can't give your testimony all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, okay, shoot me down. So he taught me that. <laughs> and then he also, he put me in, in there was Bible school in uh, Times Square Church. He put me in Bible school to, to learn how to preach. And he sent me to places to preach. He said, you did good. You did good this time. I heard, I heard, I heard. And, and, and David Wilkinson taught me one thing. He said, you can have all the gifts in the world, the kingdom, but if you don't have godly character, you'll never stay. Wow. That's so good. Wow. I love David Wilkerson. He's one of my favorite preachers of all time. Many of my community obviously listens to him, loves him as well. So the fact that you got to spend some years being discipled by him, mentored by him, and uh -huh. he helped you learn to preach and do altar calls. That's incredible. I love to hear that. Um, okay. Where was your physical body when you were astral projecting? Was it in your home still? Was it at the demonic church? What happens to your physical at body home. during that? Oh, my, my it just body stays was where it's at. I would, I would actually project. There was sometimes I would actually project during the day. I would sleep. I would lay down in bed and the demon would make me go fall into a sleep and then bring me out of my body with the demon and would go curse Europe, would curse everything that was during the daytime during that side of the world. I would actually project to that side of the world because I need to reinforce the warlocks and the altars. Every, every, every country and every state has a demonic altar for Satan. 
So I will have to, I will go and reinforce the altars, the high places, and I will reinforce the, 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 the airways of, of, of the airways of the north, the south, the east, and the west, and the atmospheres of the demonic kingdom. I will reinforce them with the demons. A reinforcement, and then my body will be home, and then I come back into my body, and then at nighttime I will actually project, and then curse, and then at, at night I will actually project and curse the regions in my area to put strongholds and put bondages, so the gospel will not be preached. Wow, incredible! Um, someone said, "How old are you now, and how many years have you been serving the Lord?" Okay, I'm 58. You don't have to buy me a birthday. Yes. Wait, you're 58? <laughs> what? I didn't know that. You look, man, you look good for your age. I would have never uh, thought 58. I was That's thinking, you know, so much, man, mid forties, early forties. Come on now. 50, 58. I've been walking with Jesus Christ 22 years. Come on. And the good and the bad and the ugly. I have kept my eyes on Jesus. Never left the faith. Never left the table, the Lord's table. Never negotiated. I, I've been straight with the um, genuine, not perfect. Genuine with the Lord. There's people that offer me to preach in 50 churches. They told me, come preach in 50 churches and we'll pay you a lot of money. But we would just want you to do one thing. You need to respect one thing. I said, what is that? I figured they talked the protocol. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they have a different, pro they have a protocol. They said, don't talk about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I said, when I came and I turned down invitation, I turned down movie deal that God wasn't in it because I'm, I know promotion come from God. And if I'm going to do something with God, I want to finish with him. Because a lot of times we start things, we don't finish anything and this is my heart my heart is to finish strong with the lord that when i leave hell will rejoice that i left the battlefield and the kingdom of jesus would miss me because i was here wow so good you do need in god's timing a documentary of your life because your story is incredibly powerful what god has done and the more people that hear it the better really really powerful everyone in the chat by the way john is saying you look 45 to 48 so there you go uh, not um, anonymously everyone says 45 so praise the lord i really thought you were in your mid 40s so that's incredible you're doing something right there i'm two years away from that 60 is years old. crazy man <laughs> That's crazy. I'm going to be 31 this month, man, and I feel old. I'm like, I'm getting old. Praise the Lord. Come on. Yeah. Man, you're <laughs> Come great. on. Someone, like said, someone said, when is your new book coming out? Do you have a book that you're working on? Is there a new book coming out? And if so, when? I just signed a deal with Charisma House, and I'm working on a book. It's called Arsenal Prayers. It's just basically all prayers. The ingredients of prayer, the prayer life, the ingredients of the of the soldier in Christ, the ingredients of being armed and dangerous, spiritual sniper, to be um uh, to be a spiritual sniper and to be special ops. And the prayer, the prayer book, it says it's called Arsenal Prayer, destroying satanic kingdoms. Wow. And and I'm I'm writing that book. Uh, I should be finished by October, and then they'll release it next year. Uh, Charisma House. I just signed a couple of weeks ago. I just signed a book deal with them. Awesome. So there you go, guys. Early next year, his new book will be out and we'll have you back on, of course, before then. But when it comes out, we'll have you on again and we'll talk about it. And that would be really, really good. Um, somebody said, OK, how do you suggest talking to or witnessing to someone who is in the occult? I guess the real question is, what would what like what would have reached you when when you were in the occult? Someone witnessing to you what some advice you'd give maybe a friend or family is in the occult. They're in witchcraft. What would be some things you would tell them or a way to get them out, you think? Well, I think, I think, I think, first of all, you love on the person. You need to, mm, they, they, that's good. They don't have the love of the devil. They have, they, all they have is the commitment of the devil. Never, see, the, you have commitment with the devil, but what serve us, you and I, brother, is the love of Christ mm. for us. That's what, that's what we serve because of the love of Christ that we have, that we carry, right? Because God was good to you. God was good to me. An atheist hated, hated Jesus, hated the gospel. A, a devil worship, ex devil worshiper hated Jesus, hated the gospel. So what compel you? The love of Christ. So I think you need to introduce the love of Christ. But with devil worshipers and, and people that are in a cult, you have to give them an, something that will sink into their spirit so the Holy Spirit will run with it. And, and, and it's a seed that you sow into the person. Say, what if you're wrong? What if you had a week to live and you had to make a decision? You have, a, you have two days to live and you had to make a decision. Well, I tell, I tell a lot of devil worshipers, you know what? Let's do something. Try Jesus and try the Pepsi challenge. Try him for 30 days. See what happens. Come on. That's so good. Yeah. 
I love it. Okay, let me ask you just a couple more, and we're gonna. And by the way, guys, we do have multiple videos together on the channel. A lot of the questions you guys are asking, we did a Q and A together for about an hour and a half, not long ago, so that you could just search his name on my channel, and you'll find the Q and A we did where we talk a lot about spiritual warfare. We have, I think, three or four teachings together on spiritual warfare. So some of you are like, why aren't you asking him all these spiritual warfare questions? Because we've done, we've covered these, we've been hours on them. I just wanted to ask him a couple personal questions. Uh, this is one fear, John. People have. We hear this question over and over again. People speak in tongues like legitimate tongues and they're afraid that they might be speaking in demonic tongues talk to us a little bit i know what i would say about it but talk to us a little bit about people that are watching that say i'm afraid i'm speaking in demonic tongues is that something that people do on accident well i i think i th I, I think i think i think that if you for me i, I can speak from my experience I, I spoke in demonic tongues because i was in the occult mm. and i contract with demons i spoke that way Right. There's people sometimes you speak in tongues, you know, and every, every story is different and, and uh, you can speak in tongues. But you have you have to know the Holy yeah. Spirit speak in tongues. You have to have the deep relationship with the Holy Spirit and have the peace and you have the, the discernment that you are speaking in the heavenly language. But if anything, that sometimes if you start to speak in the heavenly language, you never spoke about it, you know, and you feel some if you feel anything mystical about it, pray against it and ask the Holy Spirit to give you clarity in your in revelation, how to speak in the heavenly language. And so I think that's my take on that. You know, that's, good. Uh, that's my take on that. You know, don't don't shy away because you know you, you think that somehow, you know, you're not speaking the heavenly language. You don't have a contract with a demon, you ain't make no pact with no yeah. demon, you make yeah. no Demon, you haven't make any agreement with the demon. You're not compromised with any demons, right? So search those areas, right? If you know that you're not in those areas, and then you know that you might be speaking heavy language, but the devil's lying to you. That's good. And I want to say too, one big thing I always tell people is the way you know you're speaking in a godly tongue is you ask for the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if you ask for this, is like so explicit in Scripture. If you ask for something good. Jesus says the Father will not give you something bad. So the way mm -hmm. you know you're not speaking in demonic tongues is you didn't ask for a demonic tongue. You asked the Lord for his Holy Spirit, and he says, if you ask me for something good, which the Holy Spirit is obviously good, I'm going to give you something good. I'm not going to give you a demonic tongue when you're asking for the Holy Spirit. So I would say to all of you afraid, maybe this is a demonic tongue. Like John said, you're not in the occult. You're not practicing witchcraft. This is not something you just do on accident. Like, oh, I'm accidentally speaking in demonic tongue. This is something that the devil uses to communicate and to counterfeit. It, but it's not just on accident you speak in demonic tongues so don't stress out about it if you feel like oh my tongues aren't right if you're asking god for something good he's not going to give you something bad so i would just try to ease some of your guys's stress there okay last thing i'm going to ask you john very general question is how do we overcome spiritual attacks like how do we overcome the spiritual warfare that we're going through maybe somebody's watching they say i'm under spiritual attack i feel something on me i feel like anxiety or fear i know you have an entire book on overcoming fear maybe i'm, I'm feeling fear or an attack what would your advice be to just overcoming that spiritual attack that someone might be going through the best thing you could do like i do for myself right when, when i get an attack that come over me or suck and punch me or try to grab me grip me or try to try to manipulate me or try to put a strong hole on me first of all let me just say something out, out of the box you yeah. know if you have a struggle anybody struggling with something you could be struggling with pornography you could be uh, anger um, rebellion you could be struggling with unforgiveness put that on check man deal with it now come on deal with it now don't bro don't let that situation manifest to a point there's a stronghold and then from a stronghold it moves into bondage you know, you deal with the situation now because if you don't deal with it now, later on it's going to deal with you on a different level, higher level, more. It's going to have more uh, a dominion over you. Understand? So, 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 why not deal with the struggle now? Then let it be uh, a situation that's going, to, you know, from 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 struggle to bondage. From mm -hmm. I mean, from stronghold. I mean, from from struggle to stronghold. From stronghold to bondage. So don't let that stuff escalate. Deal with the situation. Cut curse it to the root. Deal with it now. Deal with the root of the issue now. Understand? So, so to me, when I get these attacks and things from over me, my spiritual warfare, I get spiritual warfare. Other Christian will commit suicide. You know, the spiritual warfare I get. First of all, I don't move. I don't panic. I don't let it move. I don't let it shake me. I don't let it rattle me. I, I yeah, it might grip me for a second, but I shake it off and I understand where is it coming from? Why is it coming? Why? What the devil is trying to accomplish? You see, I understand these things because I understand that God signed off on it. Mm. and not allow it to happen so when i know that god i know something on it there's no reason for me to hit the panic button and go into panic because if i go into panic i start making permanent decisions on temporary situations mm. need to come to a place to understand that any spiritual warfare time and it's it, 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 the, the law allowed to happen in your life there's a purpose there's a reason 
for it. So understand the purpose of the reason and don't sink in shallow waters, man. Don't give in to the devil. Don't compromise. Don't don't let the devil think that he got big, he got more power than God. The devil is the devil is a mush mouse. Come on. There's no one like God. There's no one like Jesus Christ. There will never be. If Jesus Christ has no beginning, he has no end. He sits in the circle of the earth. He owns everything. You know, and let me share one one little thing with you just to show the impact of who yeah. God is in life. Kevin Zadai, my friend Kevin Zadai, he gave his testimony once. I ministered with him at his meeting. And he said that when he died, he went to heaven. Just to give you to give you something to hold on with when the attacks come. He said when he died, he went to heaven. He sat with Jesus on his desk, and there was a little globe about this size on his desk. And uh, Kevin kept looking at it, and then Jesus caught him looking at it, and just to paraphrase the whole situation, uh, he said, uh, he said, he said, he said, he said, Jesus, is, is that the, is that, is that that, that thing on your desk, is that the globe? And Jesus said, no. He said, that's not the globe. He said, what is it? He said, that's the universe. If Jesus can have the universe this small sitting on his desk, mm -hmm. ain't no devil in hell, no witch, no warlock, no witchcraft of any kind, no strong, no bondage, no devil, no witchcraft, no devil himself, be able to stop you, be able to control you, be able to curse you, because what God has blessed, no one can curse. And what, if God is with you, who could be against you? Understand the things of our kingdom are higher than the kingdom of the devil himself and his cronies. Learn how to stand, learn how to wait, and learn how to move when God tells you to move. So good. That's a great way to put it right there, John. Do us a favor before we get you off here. I really appreciate your time in hour and 30 minutes. People in the chat are asking about the e-course, about schooling. How can we get in classes? Before we go into that, we're going to talk a bit about that. But I would love you to pray for those watching, maybe those that aren't saved, maybe those that are under spiritual attack, just a general prayer over everybody watching that God would just heal, deliver, save, and the power of God would be released. Such a strong testimony you have. You know, I feel God is just moving even right now in people's hearts as you're speaking as you're talking so if you would pray for us and then we'll talk to you guys a little bit about some of his e-courses and some other things but just do us a favor here john and uh just pray for the audience but father right now we just pray for my brothers and sisters right now under the sound of our voices my brother and i we come in agreement there's power and agreement there's power unity we touch and agree with the holy spirit right now we break every demonic witchcraft stronghold bondage we break every besetting sin every compromising spirit every tormenting devil father we put the judgment of god upon these wicked spirit we drown those devils in the blood of jesus christ father we release boring angels from michael's court to go down and destroy this man to every devil that's trying to destroy and kill our brothers and sisters every demonic devil that's trying to control, manipulate, Father God, and any devil of sickness, poverty, Father God, any devil of tormenting devil of the mind, the scorning of the mind, we break it, destroy, we curse it to the root. I release the anointing, I release the presence of God upon my brothers and sisters from the crown of the head to the soul's feet. Lord, you promised us, you're the man that will never lie. You promise that no weapon formed against us will prosper. That we are more than conquered. We hold on to your words. We live by your word. We live by your promises, and we are kingdom minded. We're not church. We're kingdom minded people. We serve an amazing God, an awesome God, a God that is undescribable. We thank you, Lord, that you've covered the universe, but you fit in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So powerful. For those of you that want some extra schooling, some classes, a lot of the questions you ask, he has in his book, but also in his e-courses. John, talk to us for a minute about your latest e-course. I have it pinned in the comments, and I also have it in the description there. If you guys want to be a part of that, you can sign up there. And then also your inner circle. Just talk to us a bit about the new e-course that you just made. Well, my, 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 my e-course is basically front line for confronting the devil. Stop running from the devil. Stop making excuses to the devil. Stop talking about the devil. Stop. It's time to confront. We talk about spiritual, spiritual warfare ops. We talk about like what we, we, we you share, what you teach, what you equip the saints, what you prep the saints with. It's time. Stop talking about the devil. Confront Come the on. devil. It's an eight-week course with a workbook, spiritual warfare prayers to make. I mean, there's people that are taking the course. There's people that have testimonies after testimonies saying, I know how to deal with the devil. I know how to, I know where the strongholds are coming. I know how to discern now. I know how to stand against the devil. I can, the, the devil can't grip me. The devil, there's no, this. he can't shake me. He can't move me. I'm unshakable. I'm going to move my relationship with Jesus has gone up to here because of the e-course. And the e-course is some way that we need to build your spirit man, your inner man. We're dealing with the inner man that's anemic. We're dealing with the inner man that doesn't have a relationship as far into the Holy Spirit. We built you up in, in, in spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare arsenal. The plot, the scheme, the walls of the enemy, the components of the demon, the trap, the setup that the devil has is playbook. It's on the front line of these e-courses. You can see the devil coming from a mile away. The devil has old components. He just know how to dress them up new. Mm -hmm. And we do the devil bear. And he's in e-courses. Eight weeks of training with a workbook. 
and spiritual warfare on the end. So you can come out of that place, come out of that place, season, come out of that place and sit in the place that God wants, God's perfect will, really, in the e-course. Amen. Awesome. So there's some teaching there, guys. And then what about your inner circle? Is that something that's closed? Is that open? Talk to us I about that as well. Amen. Thank you so much. My inner circle, I left it open for the next 48 hours. My okay. inner circle trained believers, you know, I, I don't, my inner circle, the people that I'm in my inner circle right now, they are not mediocre Christians. They don't dress like a mediocre Christian. They don't act like mediocre Christian. I'm talking about you get challenged, you get built, you get trained, you get equipped, you get prepped. I, I do e-courses. I mean, not e-courses. I do, I do, I do the Q and A's there. I pray for people. I do mass deliverance there. I train people how to be armed and dangerous in the e-courses. It's a community of people that come together to be ambassadors, to be vessels of honor. We come together, equip and train. Let me just share something real quick. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick. Go for it. E -course. E -course is the same. If you don't want to make any headlines, against the kingdom of doctors don't join the e-course don't join it <laughs> don't, don't don't join the inner circle it's not for you because you know mediocre christianity is a dime a dozen and i share one <laughs> and it's a dime a dozen and then listen if you want to be mediocre you want to be normal you want to fit in the 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 the, the 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 whole inner circle is not for you because you could dress like them you can walk like them you can act like you can go whatever they go you can think like they think you can do whatever they do you just be a copycat the inner, the inner to train people to be greater virgin of vessels of honor for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's people that have been in the inner circle and they come to my meetings. They also get VIP seats in my meetings where I come preach and whatever I'm at. And I take care of them. I love on them. And I just want them be, just to be God's best. And that's what the inner circle is about. Awesome. So guys, check that out. We have in the description in the comments. I'm going to stay on here for a bit, guys, because I want to open it up for you guys to donate. But John, I'll get you off here. Thank you so much for being on, brother. My brother. I know we got to keep doing this together. I keep. I hope we just keep doing this. You know, and 10 years go by. We say, hey, remember 12 years ago I had you on? Thank you so much, John, for being on. I honor you and love you, man. Almost, I, yeah, go, yeah. I want your audience to harass you because I believe, just me, I'm just crazy me, just a little me, that you and I one day, we should share the same platform together and yes. do, do a powerful together. You and I on the same roof to do a spiritual warfare conference. You and I on the same roof. I'm believing God that before the rapture comes, come on. Okay. Before the rapture come, you and I be on the same city on the same platform, sharing the same battlefield together. Awesome. Let's do it. I'm excited for it. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on tonight, John. All right. God bless, All right, God my bless brother, you. you. Yeah. All right. Love you, man. Bye bye. Love you too, man. Okay, guys, so the link in the description for the e-course, it might not be uh, working, but the one in the comments does. So actually, you know what? Let me edit this really quick while I'm live. If you guys want to give the links to give her on screen, I just remember this was an old link that was on the YouTube. So watch this. I'm going to edit it as I'm live here. We're going to edit the link so it works, okay? I apologize for that. I know, oh no, it is the right one. Never mind, I don't apologize. The e-course is linked right down below there so you guys can join in there. Okay, I was wrong. It is right. So I don't know why your, your link wasn't working. It should be working there. I'll just double check it here on my other site. The e-course, let's check it here. It's for sure working in the YouTube description. Is it not working? Let's see. Come on, please tell me it's working. Is it working guys? Let me know. I think it might not be working. Let's see. I just checked it too before the stream. I don't know, you guys let me know if it's working. If not, it's in the description. So you can find it on his website as well, johnramaris.com. You guys can find his e-course, his inner circle. I have it linked in the description. I don't know why this other link is not working for some reason, but we're going to get it worked out. No info on the inner circle. Okay. It's not working. No. Okay. We're going to get it fixed here, guys. Let me think about this really fast. If you guys want to give, you can. The link's to give her on screen. I do want to bless all the guests that we have on as well. So don't dine and dash. I know there's 4,000 people on still. People are dropping off here. But if the link's to give her there, they're on screen. They're pinned in the comments. I do appreciate all the donations. We couldn't do this without you guys. So these donations keep us going. Let me figure out how I can get this link. I'm just going to pin it here. Give me one second, guys. I will get it pinned on Facebook. The inner circle link is going to be there as well on his website. But yeah, I don't know why these links are deciding not to work here. Just give me one second and we're going to pin this on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, bear with me. I'm going to get it pinned right now. Okay. So there's the two links. There's the giving link. And then there's John Ramirez's link. Oh, hold on. I'm creating a new one. Will this let me? Let's see. Okay. Hopefully this works. There's PayPal and then there's his link here. I just posted this on Facebook. Let me pin it, guys. And you guys can give. The links are to give are in the description and in the comments. 
all the links are there. I just put a new thing for his e-course. So there you go. And his inner circle is on his website. So you may have to go to the website to do that. But now the link should be working. And let me just double check the site here to make sure that we're working. And my mods are also posting it, guys. So don't stress out about it. It worked. Okay. Let me double check here. It's just taking me to that website. So let me fix it. Watch. Hold on. We're going to get this working here. I'm a nerd guy, so don't stress. Okay. Here we go. Oh, no. I lost it. Again, you guys can give. The donations are on screen. They're link linked in the comment. If you want to give, you can do that now. Again, we really appreciate it. Let me link this last one. Sorry, guys. I'm doing all this stuff live. I got like five screens in front of me, so don't log off. Bear with me. I'm almost done linking the new one. Here we go. We are linking it. Okay, there's that. Let me link one more thing. I'm fixing it here. I'm doing this all on the spot quickly. So just bear with me, bear with me. It's going to work out. We're going to be fine. You're going to hang in there. Okay, so the e-course is there. It's under my donation links for tonight's stream. So if you click to expand the donation links, you'll see the e-course. And let me double check to make sure that it works. Is it the same one? Come on, please. There it goes. Okay. Yes, the e-course works now. All right, there we go. I fixed it on both things. There's the e-course. It's in the comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you, okay? We nerded out. All right, guys, if you want to give, you can. Again, we are crowdfunded. All of our content on my channel is free. So this was all free tonight. If you can't afford to give, don't feel bad. But if you can't afford to give, please pray about sewing and donating. We've been live for almost two hours. Again, these are this is all free content. We're crowdfunded by you guys. So please pray about giving. Pray about, about becoming a monthly partner. We couldn't do this without you. And I couldn't bring on guests without you guys supporting and helping. So I really appreciate it. I'm going to give you guys a minute to donate. There's Venmo. There's my website. There's PayPal and Zelle. So there you go. All right. So yeah, you guys can go ahead and give there. I'll read some of these comments here. Awesome, awesome night. An hour and 42 minutes we've been live. If you're still listening on Spotify, you can give on the website, isaiahsell.com slash partner. I forgot to stop recording. So there's that. But there you go. Isaiah, are you streaming lights, warm lights or LED lights? I'm streaming with LED lights. Okay, and I'll let you guys give. I'll let it load while you guys are giving. Again, the link should all be fixed there. And you can go to his website to find the inner circle link because it's not, it's not popping up for some reason. But yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Spiritual Warfare Conference. Let's go. Tomorrow night, I'll be preaching in Modesto. For those of you asking, in Modesto, California, tomorrow night, doors open at 6. Info on my website. I'll type my website info in the chat. IsaiahSalver.com slash schedule. Everything you guys could look for is on my website. Really, it is. IsaiahSalver.com. You can find all the links. The deliverance map, the schedule, the giving, all of that. I'm doing good, Acacia. Thank you. How are you? What an awesome, awesome time. It's always powerful having John Ramirez on and sharing his testimony. Super powerful. As you guys just saw, one of the most powerful testimonies that I've ever heard before. And it's just, every time I hear it, it's just powerful. See you in Texas. Yes, I will be in Texas May 14th and the 15th. You can register for that on my website as well. It's a free event, but I appreciate you guys registering. I'm going to fix some tents so I can donate. No worries, JC. No worries. If you can't afford to give, do not worry about it. Do not apologize. Those that can give. The reality is, guys, about 1% of our live viewers give, but it's enough to keep us fully going. So please, most people that watch this live do not end up giving, and that's totally cool. If they can't afford it, that's fine. Again, I want our content to reach as many people as possible, which is why it's free. And so don't feel bad. Don't apologize. God will provide. Either way, I've, I've been for 11 years. I've never been on a salary and God has provided for our ministry. God's provided for my family since the very beginning. So I'm not stressed about it. It, it is what it is. We appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, John Ramirez is legit. He's awesome. He's a powerful man of God. Again, guys, 25 years he was in the occult and he's been serving God for 22 years, traveling, preaching, doing ministry. Um, he was mentored by David Wilkerson. Super, super powerful. My neck is doing better. I still appreciate the prayers though, but my neck is doing better. Thank you. I want to give, but the link isn't working for me. Liz, what link isn't working? Let me check for you. What link is not working, Liz? Let's see. Is it working on my end? Come on. Why are things not loading tonight? Hold on. Oh no, the links aren't working there. Hmm. Oh, I know why. Okay. Let me fix the link really quick. Come on. <laughs> I can't catch a break here, guys. Let me fix the giving links, okay? Give me one second. Okay, the e-course is in the description. 
because these links are not going to work here. And let me fix them. There's the giving links. Can't catch a break on these links. The e-course in the description should be working. If you're looking for the description, the e-course, it's in the description of the YouTube video and it's working. Yeah, it's working. I just double checked it. Let me just check. Let's see. Okay. Let me double check this. Yeah, all the links should be working. For giving to this stream, his e-course is in the description. If you guys can't figure it out, just go to his YouTube channel or go to John Ramirez. Google John Ramirez, his website will pop up. It'll take you two, sec two seconds to find it. Two seconds, you'll be able to find it, okay? If you can't get the links to work on your phone or whatever. Yeah, it's technology. It is what it is. All right, let's start reading some of these donations tonight. Again, guys, thank you for giving. We appreciate it. Okay. Excuse me, my nose is itching. All right, Wanda uh, Pena, thank you so much. So thank you for all you teach. Christy Blaze said, this is this is to start your stadium fund. Thank you, Christy Blaze. I appreciate that. Freddie and Priscilla, thank you so much. This is so powerful. Every time, it was two years ago when we first heard John Ramirez's testimony. Join your channel and soon after we became partners with the ministry. Glory to God. God bless you. Freddie and Priscilla, thank you. You've been here for two years. I appreciate you. Thank you for the donation. You are amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's like a family reunion tonight, okay? It's all full circle here. Tara, thank you. Say, so may be multiplied in Jesus' name for the furthering of the gospel and advancement of the kingdom. Thank you, Tara. Jeremiah Federchuk, thank you. The Davis family, Don, J Jackie, and Jade, thank you so much. Said blessing to both you and your family's ministries. Thank you, Davis family. Anonymous said, thank you. God bless. Thank you, Anonymous. Linda Bates, thank you. Maritza Mendez, thank you. All right, I see all your prayer requests here. Gil Rodriguez said, love you all. Thank you, Gil. Inga Swanson said, thank you, John Ramirez. Thank you, Inga. Shania, Shania, I, I hope I'm saying that right. Said, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you, Shania. I appreciate you. Patrick. Okay, thank you so much. Fly by demonic or angels. Patrick, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what those are. Just definitely pray and ask the Holy Spirit, but I can't give you a direct answer, Patrick. Clinton Terriano said, God bless Isaiah. When John mentioned the rapture, I can feel Dr. Michael Brown his mustache getting triggered. <laughs> Clint. Clint, you're hilarious, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Clint. Linda and Serafina said, I love when John Ramirez comes on as a guest. I always feel refreshed watching you do to God be the glory. Thank you, Linda. Anonymous, anonymous, thank you. Whitney Nylands, and thank you both. How's your neck doing? It's doing a lot better, Whitney. Thank you for praying. Marlene, thank you. Also, guys, Saturday, I will be live for probably eight to 10 hours reading the New Testament in one sitting. So join me live 11 a.m. on Saturday for the entire day. I'm going to be reading the New Testament. Pray for me. Join the stream. Hang out with us. It's going to be a good time. Martin Tungle. So thanks for this message, Isaiah and John. Unmatched duo. God is proud of you two spiritual military leaders. Thank you, Martin. Crystal Ramirez, thank you. Romer and Chelsea Morris. So thanks for your obedience and boldness. Thank you, Romer. How often do you fast? I fast a lot. I fast a lot. Um, I don't, number one, I don't like eating. So like one of my struggles, literally my struggles in life is eating. I don't eat enough. I probably eat on a daily basis, like maybe 500 to 700 calories, which is why I'm so skinny. So I hardly ever eat. So for me, fasting is is not really much of a sacrifice, which is why I try to sacrifice in other areas because I don't like eating as it is. Connor Williford, thank you so much. Said your ministry has inspired me to become a deliverance minister. Thank you, Connor. Uh, any advice? Get on the deliverance map. If you want to do deliverances and you want to help people, jump on our deliverance map. There will be plenty of opportunity for you there to do deliverance on people. Athena Chia... I don't know, say your last name, said, will you pray for me? I got you. Thank you, Athena. Said, we love you, appreciate you. James Coughlin, thank you. Lola Akambala, thank you. Anonymous, Anonymous. Yolanda Hill, said, I can't wait for the Arena Crusade. Roe vs. Wade possibly overturned. God is definitely on the move. Yes, we need to pray, guys, for Roe vs. Wade to be officially overturned. The results will come in, I believe, at the end of June. So we need to pray. That's major. We need to pray for that Roe vs. Wade to be overturned. Sonia B, thank you. Naresh Limbu, said, I came to know Brother John from Pastor... Uh, okay, I got it there. In India, who preaches like you, screaming, does healing and deliverance, and from John to you, God bless you both abundantly. Thank you so much, Naresh. Appreciate you. Gerilyn, thank you. Catherine Hale, thank you. Narwa, thank you. Thank you, all of you anonymous givers. Judy, thank you. Jeanette, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And Piazza, so thank you for bringing on John to your stream today. I was just telling my coworker yesterday about his testimony. He didn't believe me. This is confirmation. I can't wait to show the stream to him. Thank you, Anne. 
Your kingdom sister said, thank you and John. God bless you, brother. Uh, God bless you both and your families. Thank you, kingdom sister. I don't know why my video is lagging right now on stream. Not sure why. Okay, we're going to read the Venmo now. And then we are going to hang out the chat for just a few minutes here. And we've been live for almost two hours. So we'll be getting off here soon. Let me just read the Venmo. Thank you to all of you giving on Venmo. Is it working? Uh, let's see. Yes, it is working. Okay. Venmo's a great place to give because there's no fees or anything like that. It's just pretty much person to person. Jennifer Sala said, you have both really blessed me. It's hard to get spiritual warfare help from the church. Thank you so much for exposing the work of Satan and equipping us with spiritual warfare to fight against the enemy. God bless you both. Thank you, Jennifer. April Smith, thank you. John Pacone said, so good. Thanks for getting John and Mary's back on. Thank you, John. Patrick Mayo, thank you. Irma, thank you so much. Said, thanks for your faithfulness. Jean, thank you. Mabel said, for preaching Jesus, not Babylon. Thank you, Mabel. Uh, Fun Buns, Hornick said, thanks for having John on tonight. Thank you, Fun Buns. And then is it is it Mabel or Mabel? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Tracy, thank you so much. Lonnie Clay, thank you. Yesenia and Anthony Garza, so thanks for what you're doing. Thank you, Yesenia and Anthony. Anna Hernandez, thank you so much. Brandon Vera, so thanks for all you do. It's truly helped and changed my life. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, Diana Rodriguez, so thanks for all you do for the kingdom, the work you've done to bless us with wisdom and discernment. I've been truly blessed by all of your YouTube videos and teachings. I just want to keep learning and watching your channel every day. Hope you can come to Austin, Houston soon. Thank you, Diana. You guys can also give on the website. Again, if you want a monthly partner, you will get 70 sermons from me, 25% off the merch store and all that stuff. Carmine Milo. So may you continue spreading the word of God. Can't get enough of it. Thank you, Carmine. And we do have a monthly partners meeting Thursday night at 6. So if you are a monthly partner, I'll be emailing you tomorrow a link to that. David, can we do a Bob Ramirez, uh, Bob Larson and John Ramirez live? That would be awesome, David. Possibly. Matthew Vang said, bro, you and John Ramirez are the two that helped me in my walk. I love y'all. P.S. I go to your church, so if God willing, we'll meet, brother. Matthew, come talk to me. If you go to my church, I go to the 930. And then obviously when I'm preaching, I'm there all four services. But man, come talk to me. Appreciate you. I know I'm pronouncing names wrong. It is what it is. Someone said, what's tomorrow? Oh yeah, tomorrow I'm preaching Modesto. That's what's tomorrow. I'm preaching in to Modesto tomorrow. My wife says hi in the chat. Or maybe she's saying hi to me. If you're saying hi to me, hi. How do you read so fast? I read like a robot. I think I really do read fast and I do think fast as well. Uh, I'm, when I say I think fast, when I'm talking to you guys, I'm trying to slow down. But the way the speed that I'm thinking is faster than how I'm talking. So yeah, I don't know. My brain just goes really fast when I'm thinking. Okay. We're going to jump off here in just a few minutes. I know I said Bob Ramirez. That's a combo right there. Bob Ramirez, right? Have you ever whitened your teeth at the dentist? No, but I've whitened it at home, but not at the dentist, no. Where's your church in Stockton, California? Life song. Did you have Brian Barcelona? Brian Barcelona is a longtime friend. I've known him since probably a few months after I got saved. So I definitely would have him on in the future, Luke Smith. But yeah, me and Brian Barcelona go way back. Like several months after getting saved, I met Brian Barcelona. Isaiah is a very high functioning individual. I just, my brain moves pretty fast. Getting married in two days, any advice? Oh no, I don't have any advice for you, that's amazing. Just be excited, that's awesome. That's exciting. I don't know what you mean by any advice, like marriage advice, spiritual advice, what do you mean, Lauren? I'm excited for you. Someone said pearly girl. <laughs> yes, I use the pearly girl whitening pen, that is true. What's your favorite drink at Starbucks? I'm not really a Starbucks fan, to be honest. I worked there for three years, I got burned out and I don't really drink it anymore. Someone said, Brian is my church. I got baptized. Yes, I go to church in Stockton. Stockton. Is it, everyone join the Discord? Yes, if you're not in the Discord, join the Discord. Unfortunately, our links are messing up tonight, but it is linked in the description. All right, guys, I'm probably going to jump off of here. I do still have a Discord server. Yes, I do. We have almost 5,000 members. I think 4,500. It's always alive and active and moving. So you can find the Discord in the description. I apologize that the links are not working, some of them. But we're getting them worked out. I love you guys. I'm going to be live. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be preaching Modesto. Thursday night, partners call. Saturday, I'm going to be live pretty much all day. Sunday, church. Monday, live. Tuesday, podcast. So pray for me. 
we got a lot of stuff going. We're super, super busy right now. So be praying for us that God would strengthen us, give us wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and that he would just keep moving. He would keep moving in our ministry. Yes, Alyssa needs to join me for a live. I'm sure she'll peep in here on Saturday with the kids while I'm reading. Uh, I'm not just going to lock my door for eight to 10 hours. So they'll probably be peeping in and out throughout the whole time I'm live on Saturday. So you'll, I'm, sure you'll, I'm sure you'll see her plus the kids on Saturday. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. What an awesome night tonight. If you're not a multi-partner, pray about becoming one. You can do that on my website or in the links and be here Saturday, 11 a.m. We're starting. We're not ending till we finish the New Testament. I don't know if we're going to go from John to Revelation or maybe John to Revelation, then back Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are really cross-referenced, a lot of the same stuff. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna read all four back-to-back -back like I did last time I was live. I'll probably do, because I'm doing it out loud, John through Revelation, see how that goes. That'll probably take me estimated to be eight hours, nine hours possibly. So we'll see, but I'm for sure gonna read the one of the Gospels and then the entire New Testament on Saturday. It's gonna be good. Thank you, Anonymous, and I will pray for your wife, yes. Thank you. Love you guys, appreciate you guys. Love you, love you, love you, love you. I will see you guys on Saturday, tomorrow night in Modesto. If you want to come see me preach live, 6 o'clock, the doors open. I would be there at 6 when the doors open. Info's on my website, Remnant Church Modesto, tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Love you guys. I will see you on tomorrow night or on Saturday or on the partner's call. Praise the Lord. See you guys. Good night. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. We just finished the book of Acts. Yes, we finished it after six months. Praise the Lord. There's John Ramirez's website in the chat. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Love you guys. Have a good night. You hang up first. Thank you. Isaiah, what's the greatest moment you remember from your wedding day? Uh, I probably can't say it on the stream. Love you guys. Have a good night. You hang up first. Good night. Love you guys. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Or Thursday. Or Wednesday. Maybe I'll take next week off, guys. I don't know. We'll see. Because the, the week I took off to take my kids, I ended up being hurt sitting in one spot. So. <laughs> all right. I see all the laughing faces. So <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I just. What could I say? All right. What could I say? All right. <laughs> Good night, guys. I'm just being honest. I'm being. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> I'm laughing at your guys' rea <laughs> reaction. <laughs> I'm preaching in Modesto tomorrow night. Will you ever do reading the whole Bible stream? No, because it takes like 60 plus hours. <laughs> I'm laughing. My wife says she's crying. I'm laughing at the chat right now. I'm laughing at all the laughing emojis. I'm just shocked how many of you caught that. That's what I'm shocked at. Okay, bye guys. Good night.